Live from Sacramento, it's Saturday Night Soccer in the USL Championship as Republic play host to the Real Monarchs in the final tune-up before we begin the regular season play on March 7th. Alongside Kevin Goldthwaite, I'm Rob McAllister. Season number seven, Kevin. And in the offseason, there was a coaching shakeup. Republic now turning to Mark Briggs, their fourth manager in club history, to lead the side in 2020. Early on, Kevin, we're already seeing the players respond well. Yeah, Mark Briggs has got a reputation of being a very, very strong manager with great leadership qualities. And I think the first day of training, Robbie set the tone with the with the team and actually had a great little piece of, of management and leadership skills where he brought the entire front office of the Republic out, had a speech given to everyone, let them know that this is our team, this is our family. And we got a quick video over here right, right now. I guess the season starts now, right? It's my first time I address you guys on the field. Look around, because person here, front office, player, staff, whatever you may be, this is our family, yeah? This is what it's gonna take to be successful this season. And we've gotta give every little ounce of effort, of heart, determination, desire, in whatever role you do, for us all to be successful. But this is us, this is Sacramento Republic, yeah? And I promise you, if we're all in this together, we'll get where we want to go. All right, now let's get to work. Come on, let's go. Thank you for coming out, guys, thank you. This is the look of a 12-year-old cancer survivor. A boy who spent a quarter of his life fighting to get a chance at the rest. A boy whose cancer took his knee, but we gave him back the use of his leg. For extraordinary breakthroughs and everyday childhoods, UC Davis Health offers primary care and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. UC Davis Health, discovering healthy. UC Davis Health pregame show continues alongside Kevin Goldthwaite, Rob McAllister with you for this preseason matchup. And let's take a look at our consolidated communications matchup of the evening. And to a couple of guys you're gonna wanna keep your eye on. A lot of moving parts, but let's start where the guy who's had a breakout preseason, two goals a year ago. Derek Formella, Kevin. Yeah, Formella, a guy that's been with the club for a while now, uh, you know, enough time or, or now's the year he's got to step up and really kind of come out here and put some goals in the back of the net and be that striker that Sacramento needs. And Mark Briggs, like what he's seen so far, can he continue that here tonight against Real Monarch? 
Let's go down to Taylor Pay, the 28-year-old from Salt Lake City. And we've seen him with Real Monarchs for the last three seasons now. He's been a key contributor and, of course, uh, coming back now after uh, spending a year in Louisville City where he lost to his former team in the championship game, but he's back for a club that he's had some success with. Yeah, back full circle, back with his hometown club, a player that can get up and down that flank. He's got long strides, really athletic outside back. Um, gonna be a fun night to have uh, watch him here back in his home colors. And our starting 11 for Sacramento Republic, couple of changes, 4-3-3 for Mark Briggs on this side, Adam Grinwith. The goalkeeper signed in the offseason, and he'll be playing Matt Mahoney and Hayden Sargis, the academy player, to his left and right. Yeah, Sargis, academy player, 17 years old, getting his uh, little debut here, uh, USL debut, if you will. You got uh, Grenwis, you have uh, Wheeler as well. These are guys that are, you know, new guys to the team and guys that I'm frankly really excited uh, to watch. Let's take a look at Real Monarch Salt Lake City. A couple of MLS players in the lineup. Alvin Jones, you've got Ashton Morgan back there on the defensive side. So a couple of guys here that have had some time, really veteran type players. That's going to make it tough for Republic, but a good tune-up, Kevin. Yeah, and then Garcia, you got some good quality players out here. Obviously, we mentioned Taylor Pay. You got Garcia, their uh, goalkeeper, Ochoa, young, young goalkeeper, but you know, a lot of talent and kind of a, a, a free-flowing, fast side, if you will. And this is probably not the team that we'll see uh, throughout the season. We may see a couple of these players. The ball is kicked as Sacramento heading to the north end of the Tower Bridge Battalion. Meanwhile, Real Monarchs heading south into the wind here tonight. It's a cooler night. We've had incredible weather throughout Sacramento in the last month, but this is one of the coolest nights. But anyway, should be a good one between these two sides. This is the final matchup in the preseason for both squads before the USL Championship regular season kicks off next week for Sacramento. That means March 7th here against FC Tulsa. Kevin, what are you looking for here tonight? It's a preseason match, but as Mark Briggs looked at this, this is a match that he wants this guy's finding all, all cylinders the way they've been playing throughout most of this preseason. Yeah, good chance here for Cam to break. Billy and Bijev. Gonna send it cross in looking for Warner and it's sent out of play by Alvin Jones. Yeah, just a little bit too much, too much height on that ball. Needs to be driven in a little more from uh, over on the right side from Bijev. But love seeing the numbers in the box right there. But going back to your point, your question, Rob, you know, what 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 is What's Mark Briggs looking for in, a, in an evening like tonight? The last game before your, your opening game, and there's a lot of things I think specifically you want you want these guys to be obviously treating this like it is a, a, a the home opener in a real match, but you want these guys to get fully fit. And this is their last test before next week, and you don't want to have too many mistakes. Billion Tree drives this one in, but it's great. It's interesting how typically teams how they ramp up. You know, you got your players. Went down to San Jose, they played, you know, 120 minute long games, two 60 minute shifts basically for two groups. So you start to build these players up fitness wise, start probably 30 minutes up to 45 minutes, up to 60 minutes, and then up to 90 minutes where we are probably about right about now. You got to peak them at the right time, physically speaking, um, to get them going ready for next week. And this is obviously, like I mentioned, the final step, the final, you know, piece before next week. So I think at, at, for the most part, this should be, um, like it is a real game. Sacramento playing well against San Jose at Avaya Stadium, winning three to one. Drew Scundridge also having a fantastic preseason, a brace in that match. Cameron Awasa adding the other. But what was most impressive for the coaching staff was the shape was compact and the effort that they exuded after even losing the ball. And really the fight happened way upfield and not in the midfield where we've seen the last couple of years. Yeah, that's really where, where Mark Briggs and his staff right now are trying to focus on that, keeping it compact north to, north to south, meaning you know, you, uh, the, the, the di distance between Formella and a Sarge sh should be about 30 yards. You want to be compact, and then as soon as you lose the ball, you go get it as quickly as you can, and hopefully you're doing that in the final third. That's typically where your goals come from, that turnover in the final third, and you have one or two passes, and the ball's in the back of the net. And so far, so good playing. It's my giveaway or square pass. Square ball from Iwasa moving forward now. Real Monarchs looking for an opportunity. A good step from Matt Mahoney, who's now into the starting position after coming on primarily as a sub last year and then earning some, some starts there at center back, right back a couple of times. Really quite impressive for number five. And uh, to his credit, the 24-year-old now into that back line, the center back position, getting the start along with Hayden Sargent. Now, funny how to 
his start to the season last year was a bit slow, probably not not ideally for what he wanted, but he did a great job coming in and, and stayed resilient and look at him now. Head coach Mark Briggs, the 38-year-old from England, taking on the duties of the Sacramento Republic in his first season. Of course, played uh, played with Wilmington and then became an assistant head coach and then with Real Monarch. So he probably wants a little <laughs> revenge here tonight and uh, did spend some time with the academy a bit quietly last year. And uh, I think he's going to be a great fit for you. What do you think? I, I love him so far. You know, it's a uh, season hasn't even started, but seeing what he's done in the, in the preseason and sitting down and chatting with him, you know, learning what he's trying to do, what his thoughts and uh, styles are. Uh, I think it's the right fit at the right time for Sacramento. Aiden Sarge, a 17-year-old from Turlock, signing a professional contract along with Mario Panagos in the offseason. He's been impressive enough. Tomas Hilliard Arce from LA Galaxy 2 was signed in the offseason as well. He is you know, dealing with a bit of injuries, so, but they like what he can bring as well, and they feel while you don't have a Mitchell Tainer back, you don't have Harith Hansopoulos back, you do have Deco Kanan along with Hilliard Arce and Mahoney and Sargis. They feel really good about their center back position here in Sacramento Republic. Okay, Mahoney after last season, I have no doubt that he's going to come out here and perform. I'm really excited to get to watch Hayden Sargis this year uh, and seeing what the 17 year old can do. Can he be consistent throughout the season? And Wheeler, I think Wheeler was such a good pickup for, for Sacramento. One of those players drafted to Atlanta, right? And uh, talking to Todd Dunham, it really didn't get too much of a run at Atlanta, but he was in the 18 every single time. So it was tough for him to even get a, a chance to get loaned out because he's still a valuable asset to have for the coaching staff, but just didn't get enough, enough of a run. Great Little run. Little through from William Bijev looking for Skundrich and it. able to hold it down as Eric Holt, who sends it out of play. It'll be a throw for Sacramento here early. Really good run, run from the midfield right there by Skundrich. And again, we're seeing numbers in the box already here, a couple minutes in, and that's going to be a good sign for Mark Briggs. Formella being held, looking to turn the corner, sends it in. David Ochoa able to play it nicely. Yeah, decent effort there. Still three three runners in the box again, Rob. I think we've been preaching this for three or four seasons now. You need to have that, see that opposite side striker or winger has got to be in the box, and that's another thing that Mark Briggs was preaching this preseason, is energy and attitude of your strikers to get to the willingness to get in the box. Obviously, here we're six minutes in. We're seeing it, but still, good sight to see nonetheless. And we saw some of the records overall for Mark Briggs. You know, 37, 18, and 19 in USL. But don't forget, Kevin, this is a guy who took a struggling Real Monarch side in 2017, turned it around, and got them into the playoffs, ultimately winning USL Coach of the Year. Yeah, really turned it around. That was a, like a floundering, you know, Salt Lake just figuring themselves out and took a leader like Briggs to come in and right the ship and right the ship he did indeed and Salt Lake's had a really good run the last couple years. Alvin Jones looking to cut back inside. Brian Louise and Everton. Sending it back Alvin Jones from Trinidad and Tobago. OKC Energy a season ago. This Real Monarch side gonna try to do what very few have been able to do and that is repeat. Louisville City looking to go for a three-peat Ended up falling 3-1 to one in that championship game. see this year you're gonna see a lot of energy from your from Wheeler and Skundrich uh, you know talking to Briggs and, and, and Donovan about these two players you know they're they're about as box to box as you can get here's Wheeler again trying to slip it through Bjev won't be able to get there in time but look at it again you have three guys in the box Bodies you got the Wheeler box. coming up you got McCrary Barona obviously staying back for defensive purposes this time but you're seeing five six guys get into the attack every time it was impressive watching some of the film against San Jose and seeing how that attack was right there at that 18 yard box. I mean, it was constant. Second corner for Sacramento will be Juan Bajarona, the El Salvadorian. In his second year with Sacramento, lifts this one high, looking for Iwasa on the back post, and it just sails over as he can't clear enough space for Mashtone Morgan. That's a really good look there. I think Kim Iwasa needs to do a little better there. 
Maybe, maybe a bit breezy for him to misjudge it, but I think that's a good opportunity for Cam Owasa on that back post. You know, to look at it right now, just misjudges it a little bit. Taylor Pay was just, knocked just him off a little bit. Just enough, just defended enough. Got a body on him. And we should mention the head coach for Real Monarchs is Hamas, Hamison Alave, the RSL veteran, of course, legend who led the team to the 2009 MLS Cup. And he has done a great job uh, with this club, removing the interim though, now becoming uh, the head coach. He took the stint twice where he was the interim label and leading them to the championship. The only true trophies in RSL, Kevin, and Hamas and Alave involved in both the 2009 MLS Cup and the 2019, 10 years after that opportunity, USL Championship Cup. Iwasa into the attack. Warner just outside the 18, breaks to his left. Maybe a tough corner to turn as Alvin Jones, the crafty veteran, is able to win the ball back. But look at this from Formella. Formella able to keep the attack alive for Sacramento. Hard driven ball into the mix. That's that pressure that we talked about though, Rob. As soon as you turn the ball over, you gotta go get it back and see where that opportunity presented itself. If Sacramento can do that this year, I think it's gonna create a lot of chances in front of goal. Barona looking for Cam. around looking to make a step there's another win Scundrich plays it wide three in the box for Sacramento cutting in is Warner had it picked away just from the side there but another decent effort from Sacramento as the attack continued to be relentless this entire preseason McCrary is taken down from behind they have a free kick for Sacramento about maybe 25 yards or so out this could be a pretty good look It's a great job by Mercury picking up that ball. Again, we're talking about second balls. Just from behind, Garcia is. Gray looking quite fit as well. They were quite thin on those outsides. Shannon Gomez still out dealing with that uh, knee injury that he suffered along that right knee. And he is back in training, so hope to see him maybe end of April. A decent opportunity here distance wise the wind at your back a little bit i think it's a good opportunity here for barahona to try to go over the wall near post barona skirts it underneath not, not the best effort there those are the situations from. those situations robbing you see sometimes a, a bit of a cheeky free kick as you try to go under the wall it's got to be on the ground um, i just think it's just a miss hit by barahona that's the first ball we've pretty much seen go backwards and here comes a Heavy challenge on Deion Harris, the 22-year-old, goes into Barona, and I don't know if we'll see yellow here, but Andrew Wheeler, I mean, is <laughs> pleading for one as his teammate continues to lie on the ground. Yeah, it's a late aggressive challenge. I don't know if there's any malice in that. Barona's got to get it. Well, while we have some time, is uh, Barona is being attended to. Get one more look at it. Barona looking to go backwards. And just got swept underneath and rolls, stuck. He rolls his ankle a little bit. Preseason match. We'd like to welcome up to the booth the President and Chief Operating Officer of Sacramento Republic FC, Ben Gumpert. Ben, thanks for joining us. Well, I don't know if we're maybe having technical difficulties with Ben's audio here, but we'll get that figured out and then we'll hear from Ben here in just a moment. But Aiden Sarge is sending one forward. I'd like to see that from our your center back, not shying down from that challenge, putting his foot in there. Doesn't look like a teenager, that's for sure. Okay. 17 year old, he's incredible, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I'd have the nerves to be able to <laughs> perform the way he has in preseason against MLS sides, no, essentially. No, it's been incredible. Here's Barona, and I think now we have Ben Gumper. Ben. Sorry for the delay. Back, <laughs> back at it. Good to be with you guys. What's going on? Here, season number seven for Sacramento Republic FC. It's hard to imagine uh, that it's gone by so fast, but it's exciting time in Sacramento. And uh, a week away now, we've got some pretty exciting uh, news coming as the 
season home opener right here against FC Tulsa. Yeah, just, you know, it's just nice to have soccer back. Um, and you see it here tonight, but certainly it'll be uh, in complete and full effect next Saturday. You only open we have once a year, and so it's, a, it's always a special night, certainly, uh, to be in front of the Republic home crowd, whether you have returning players, some new players that get to experience Sacramento uh, at, behind them, which is a huge thing. Uh, they, they've talked about it, they, they know about it, but to feel it for the first time is huge. So we're excited for uh, a packed house. We want everybody to come out, support, uh, support their squad, because it's gonna be a fun one. We saw the uh, video with Mark Briggs and uh, in that preseason where you brought everybody out, but not just the team, but you had the entire front office out there and he really said, you know, we're a family. I I've never seen that. And what a moment that was. How did you feel that went along, not just the players, but the staff in the front office? Oh, man, it meant so much to every single one of us. And, and it really came out as a few days before, uh, you know, I was talking to Mark and he was telling me about his plan. He literally called me that night uh, on the phone. He's like, sorry to bother you. I'm like, well, you know, Mark, like, no, no worries anytime. And he said, I just, I was thinking, you know, it's, it's big when we first welcome the team, I address them for the first time on the field. I want everyone to be there. And I said, you know, yeah, what do you mean? He's like, no, I want everyone to be there. I want the entire club uh, to be there. I know it's hard. And I said, you know, stop right there. Of course, like that's the right way to do it. Couldn't be anything more fitting for us as Sacramento Republic. We talk about it as one organization, you know, fans, players, staff, you name it. Uh, and I thought that was just a, a great way to, to kick off the season. Men, meant so much, you know, from our interns to to Kamawasa to first time players, you name it. We all, we all got to see everyone come together at, at midfield for the first time. And, and that's the right way to welcome everybody back and, and to start off season number seven. For the, for the players themselves, I think it means something, but also when you talk about the, the sales people, right? You're the, the, the employees in, in the office, like that you'll actually like touch and feel and see what's going on. Hopefully it means something and it's impactful to everybody where they can, you know, put a name to a face and actually shake a hand. So I think it's a, a great job by Briggs and his, uh, and his team to bring everyone together because it really is. It's one big family and you all got to work for each other. It's one big family. You see that certainly in our office when we're doing our jobs right. You see it here uh, at the park, people hugging each other. It's all, you know, the whole time as people are coming in like, oh, welcome back. Haven't seen you in a couple months. You see fans with each other, fans with our staff. Uh, and Todd Donovan has been great, you know, from the very beginning. You know, he actually just walked, we had our staff meeting earlier in the week. He walked through film for our entire staff, sales staff, you name it. Uh, and everyone, I got so many texts that night, like, oh, I'm so excited. And I, I never realized like how much went into it. Yeah, it's just- how, how impactful that can be. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and it really just puts together this, you know, what the culture that we've been building and continues to build here, which is, you know, we're all in this together. Um, that includes the staff, that includes the city, right? Which is what's made this club so special. Uh, and I just can't wait for this to continue to grow and set a new standard in MLS or in sports, you name it, um, because that's the right way to do it. Wonderful opportunity to do so. That's great. What I'm interested to see is just the way that Mario Panagos and and uh, Hayden Sarges can have an impact in this 2020 campaign. I mean, you're taking a chance as a club on these guys later. I mean, you don't just have 17-year-olds on your team because you feel good about having some local guys on. I mean, these guys, you hope are going to have some long-term impact, I'm guessing, right? This is an opportunity for them, hopefully, to see them in a couple years from now. Oh, you better believe it. Uh, Mario and, and Hayden, for them to have worked through our academy system for the last few years, but they've earned every you know bit of right to, to be out on the field, have Hayden starting there, talk to his family uh, before the game tonight. They were just you know through the moon excited, both of them, Mario's family as well. Uh, and it's, yes, this is about you know us building the club for, the, for, for now and for the future. You guys know Todd, you guys know Coach Briggs. We wanna win a championship this year and, and we set out Every year to do that, so that doesn't change. A for Lawson, it's saved by Achoa, it carries it away. A good nice job, Kim. Building a holding play there by Derek Formella, who sat perfectly in the box, laid it to a charging Cameron Owasa, just couldn't break through the hands of David Ochoa. I love seeing that combination play between Formella and Owasa. Want to see that grow? I want to see that, that that relationship fostered. But a great job back to goal, wonderful layoff, good first touch by Cam, decent effort on, tar on target, good save by Ochoa. It'll be a corner kick for Sacramento here as we continue to talk with Ben Guppert, the president of Sacramento Republic FC, and now some extracurricular inside 
the box there. Love the intensity. M might be preseason, but you'd have, have everyone in here fold. You wouldn't know it. I mean, compared to what we saw against Seattle, Sounders up in Seattle, some of the film watching against the San Jose Earthquakes at Avaya. I mean, this team is in very good form right now. Let's see if they can break through almost the game's first goal in the 19th minute is Iwasa. Had a pretty good strike, and Ochoa guessed the right direction. And now Formella is getting a talking to. And I'm always impressed, Ben. I mean, here's a preseason night. Somehow we've had incredible warm weather for a month, and now the first cool nights, and now we have a preseason. It doesn't matter. And look at these fans out here on a preseason game. I'm always impressed for fans that will come out and support this club no matter what the circumstance. This ball's driven in. Here's a chance for Mahoney and sent over the bar. But a good look for Sacramento here early. Good look. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Rain, sleet. We had a, we had a few things last year. Yeah, we had a lot of rain. We had the lightning game that turned into hail that, that turned in, and, and our fans were were going the whole time. Drums beating. Uh, they almost took, you know, they take pride in it, which I love. Uh, you know, while the players, I think they were pulled back in the locker room for 45 minutes, I don't think the drums ever, ever stopped. It, I mean, it's so neat to, uh, to see this community come together. Certainly Tower Bridge Battalion, our supporters, uh, fame supporters, and just the, the noise and energy they bring and how that continues to grow. It's, it's special. So we've got a couple of uh, events coming up. What do we have here on Monday? On Monday, we got, we got things all the time. We got things all the time. So on Monday, non, non, non-profit mixer. So this is something we started actually just last year for the first time. We bring all the non, we invite actually all the non-profits in the entire region uh, to come together just to give the latest on Republic and more importantly hear from them about how we can help reach their goals and their initiatives. Uh, as you guys know, this club again was founded just as we continue to talk about uh, about making this community a better place. Uh, certainly, the work of so many in the nonprofit world is a huge aspect to that. Uh, so we are going to continue to do our part to grow, build more fields, work on school programs, get more kids uh, out there on fields, support coaches, uh, support food programs, you name it. There's so many things that are, are going on in this community that are necessary and some unbelievable people leading those. Uh, and so on Monday, we're doing that. So if you're a nonprofit out there, if you don't know if you're attending, check. Uh, make sure that someone on your team is there. Reach out to us. You'll see it on, on sacrepublicfc.com. Uh, but it's a great way to incorporate uh, yourself and your mission into into what we're building together, and that's that's where it all that's where it all happens and comes together. Switching the field here for Real Monarch Salt Lake. This ball is driven high, little shove in the box from McCrary, hoping for a call was Garcia. Won't get it, and now McCrary will look to turn this the other way for Sacramento. We got a lot going on every day, you know. I mean, it's, it's always something. You can. We might have, uh, still have some kits to announce that'll, that'll happen oh, next week. Okay. I might be breaking news here, I don't know, but <laughs> we'll have to tune in to, to see what, what those look like. Always a fun part. And it's, uh, I will, uh, a credit to, I think, the, the staff and who put the, a lot of the merchandise together because it really is some of the best gear, and not only just here in Sacramento, but really across the league and across the country. I see Republic stickers, sweatshirts, you, no matter what, you see it everywhere. It could be in the middle of winter and you've got Republic gear 24 seven. So it, it's really great to see that there's such a large support for this club uh, at so many levels. And it's pretty good design. I think people love the old glory red too, Ben. The red, you know, just a, <laughs> You see California through it, you see Sacramento through it, and just that sort of spirit uh, that we have. I see it all the time in airports literally around the country. I was on vacation with my family. I was going on a run wearing my Republic gear. Everyone's like, Sac Republic, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. I'm like, hey, I, you know, we're in halfway around the world, literally. Uh, and you see that, and that's where you know that you've struck a chord and that we've built something special that resonates certainly with people in this community and, and what it's meant, but just this this whole notion of indomitable and of perseverance, right? We can all relate to that in some way. I think this club has shown it, the city has shown it in so many ways, um, and you, you see that reflected. Oh, tough clear from Ochoa and Cameron Awasa right in his face, but it will go back for a goal kick. Ochoa had a pretty good 2019 campaign, also part of the U.S. Men's National Team U-20 squad. And Ben, another thing, kind of talk about community and what Sacramento is doing here. Uh, what's going on with the, the free tickets for coaches program? Is there is there a, a, an initiative here where if you're a coach, all you sports coaches can get to get tickets to games from the club? 
Yeah, that's right, Kevin. I mean, I know you were a coach, so I had to get you in the <laughs> get you in the stadium somehow. Yeah, you so. sick soccer, man. That's right. Yeah. No, but in all seriousness, like that that matters. Uh, we need great U6 coaches out there. We need great U8 coaches. Ball served in. Other end was Villian Bijev from Warner, where it all began, and now Sacramento looking to track back. There we go, Sam. Yeah, I mean, coaches. I mean, again, just like we were talking about nonprofits, there's so many people at all levels doing important things in this community. And coaches is a huge one. And the fact is, coaches do so much for kids as role models, teach them not just about soccer, of course, that's, um, it's more about teamwork and discipline, uh, relying on each other, what it takes uh, to come together as a team. And that's necessary, you know, whether you're gonna play soccer and top out at, at rec levels or high school or, or play professionally. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have enough coaches in, in this community, especially in some underserved neighborhoods, especially female coaches. So we have different initiatives. Ormella keeps it low. Wheeler was there to swing. And it's just Close. sent away. And another good look for Sacramento. And I, it, uh, yeah, we I talked about how many players in the box again and again already. And another challenge, and Jordan McCrary has every right to be upset. The second time this half, he's been taken down. And now we see yellow for the first time this evening. Yeah. So the more we can do to support coaches, licensing, uh, education, but again, as, as a very small token of, of appreciation uh, to make sure that every coach had a free ticket to a game this year. Uh, so we launched that formally. Uh, anyone that's a coach out there, by the way, of any sport, uh, can go to our website, type in their, their club name, where they're coaching, what they're doing. Uh, and they'll get a free ticket. Again, a small way to thank them, but we're, we're gonna do a bunch around. Even underwater coaches. basket weaving? Even underwater basket weaving. Great. So Rob, See? you're in too. Great, I love you this. You are in too. This is why I love this club. That's right. All right, here's a free kick here for Sacramento. Can they poke one through? On the other end, there's Hayden Sarges, and now it's Skundrich. And Skundrich's not able to clear that first line. And on the counter, Real Monarchs pushing the other way. Oloski, the UCLA graduate, and he is brought down from the back from Sam Warner, and we may see a booking, and that's the second of the evening, and the first for Sacramento, and it comes in the 26th minute. You know, not, not the worst thing in the world to have happen right there. Sam Warner picks up the caution, but slows things down as Salt Lake was really kind of pull, pulling ahead with a head of steam right there. So good job by Sam to slow it down. Takes the yellow card nonetheless, but still not the worst thing that can happen. And Iwaski is such a dynamic player. He was a Pac-12 standout just a season ago, and Real Monarchs taking a flyer on him. They feel it. he could be a part of their future as well. Sam Warner, a breakout year for him, his best as a professional. And a set piece here for the Real Monarchs of Salt Lake City. And really the first time that Adam Grinwis, the new goalkeeper for the Republic, will likely see something come his way. And this one sent directly through and into the net. No one moving. And the Real Monarchs have struck first. And it's one to nothing. Yeah. Alvin Jones. We don't have the best view from up here, but that the ball from our side angle still looked like it had a ton of movement on it right there. You can see, uh, you can see Alvin Jones set up. It definitely looks like he's gonna have a strike just by the way he puts the ball down and just hits a knuckle ball, just connects cleanly as you as you'd like and absolutely no chance. Adam Grinwis frozen. See where this goes, but he just absolutely, I mean, look at that, probably starts on the, you know, here's, a, here's a great look. Look at, look at the bottom of that ball fall out. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> a fantastic nice. goal from Alvin Jones, a 25 year old from Trinidad, Tobago. <laughs> Grinwis takes a step to the right, the ball ends up eight feet to his left. That's unreal. What a strike. That may be one of the best strikes <laughs> we've seen in a couple of years. And on a set piece, you're seeing that. Marks. You're seeing that so often now. I mean, even from that distance, that's kind of what I was thinking. If he's going to have a strike here, he's going to have to. Here's another chance for Real Monarchs. And oh, another opportunity coming forward is going to be just outside the penalty area, and a bit close. It may be a tough angle for Salt Lake City, but Kevin, again, two set pieces already in this first 30 in the last couple of minutes as Real Monarchs have made the Republic pay. Just a slip and fall, it looks like, from Iloski. Now there's a little bit of contact right there. Don't think it's enough, especially in that position on the field. You like to think that there'd be a little bit more contact for the referee to blow his whistle, but he does nonetheless. And this is still, this is a, a challenging spot to take a step. This has just got to be pure power, basically. You're just going to 
pick a spot, hit as hard as you can. Well, it's going to likely be Alvin Jones again as he sends Iloski uh, to the front line. You have Deion Harris to his right. From 19 yards out, ball sent high over the bar, and this will escape. But again, another well-driven ball. Alvin Jones with a freaking foot. Oh, my goodness, what a strike. He definitely connected with that one. Just obviously didn't get his knee over it as much as you'd like compared to his last strike. Here's a good look. Yeah, he's obviously clearly going for power right there, trying to find a seam. So before we let you go, as uh, Ben Guffer continues to join us here in this uh, preseason match, uh, MLS, obviously big celebration last fall, a lot of exciting things, and and now the hard part is we got to wait two years. So what's uh, the <laughs> latest? No, I mean, listen, we need every bit of those two years, and it's, it's great. Again, we have this season uh, and have our fans back and, and next season, but as we continue to build the new stadium, build out the rail yards. Here's Garcia, 1v1, pokes it through, and it's 2-0, the Real Monarchs and the Sacramento Republic are having a tough time here at home in their first preseason matchup in front of these fans. I tell you what, just like that, down 2-0, and Sacramento's looked really good for the first 25 minutes and let Salt Lake back in in the last five, and before you know it, in the rearview mirror, you got two goals you got to chase and try to figure out. I feel like my broadcasting career is over. <laughs> Bad luck up here. You're wow. out. We'll see when we get you back up Right. <laughs> so wow. more, be, so uh, positively, what you're you're working a lot. I would see there's uh, quite a bit of work to do, not only on the field but off the field as well. Yeah, there's a ton, but it's exciting, you know, to to everything that we're doing around the stadium and the rail yards, which we know again, stadium or not, is such a huge piece of the development of of this city and this community and this region. Um, so to work on that, and again, as we work toward groundbreaking in late spring, early summer, uh, but doing a lot of the pre-con work right now, certainly a lot going on, a lot of work uh, going on even without bulldozers out there. Uh, but it's, it's also about building up the staff and building up more programs for fans. And uh, we're building out, uh, you know, looking at training facility sites and continuing to build fields in the community and build out youth programs. So it, it's really across the board. Uh, what we need to do in order to be successful and we want to make sure that we're hitting the ground not just running but in full sprint in, in 2022 across every dimension uh, and so it takes takes a lot of work to get there but it's it's exciting we wouldn't have it any other way and and we're thrilled about the position we're in in Sacramento and think we can we can hit the ground uh, with an incredibly competitive club uh, both on the field and, and one that does all the right things off the field and that's our goal and we expect nothing less. It should be uh, a good couple of years. Meanwhile, we got this 2020 campaign, and it's about to get underway next week. It's the FC Tulsa who have completely revamped their roster and new ownership group there as well. So there will not be a pushover game. Should be a great match to start off this 2020 campaign. And uh, hopefully you'll bring us better luck than what we've seen so far tonight, Ben. Yeah. Hey, it's still still early. Still I'm, I'm, you know, I'm proud of how the guys have played all preseason. Uh, hopefully they continue to fight back as they always as they always do. And next week, you know, home opener happens once a year, just like we talked about. And so I'm excited to see everyone. Hopefully everyone that's watching at home can come come join us. Bring your hoodie, bring your bring your Republic sweatshirt, uh, and get ready to have some fun. Should be a great one. Thanks for joining us. We uh, look forward to a great seventh season of Sacramento Republic here in Sacramento. Formella making some moves, looking for Iwasa, combining well. Keeps it alive. Wheeler, and he's... Able to stay up on his feet for just enough time by Rona now, looking for some space. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Ben. We'll talk to you soon, and uh, we'll get you right back on the air. Better results. But Republic looking good here in that first 25, as you talked about, Kevin. And what went right when you saw the attack and the way that we saw guys making runs, and then a couple of turnovers really doomed them here to make it 2 nothing. Yeah, a set piece, obviously, from 35, 40 yards out kind of a worldy of a goal that doesn't happen too often so uh i mean i think they just got to, to get back into this right now just got to keep playing and you know go out and try to fight to get that one goal and then the next one's gonna be easier to get skundrich is taken down and we another set piece for sacramento republic last season 48 points 14 14 and six into that seven seed where they ended up winning two games before falling to El Paso on the road. Real Monarchs, a fantastic year. We talked about already making 
playoffs. You know, the fourth seed, they're going 16, 10, and 8. This ball's driven in. Holt's able to get to a head. And now Skundrich will try to keep it and send it away. It'll be a throw in for Sacramento. And uh, talk about this too much, Kevin, but just sort of your keys overall, what you want to see is we are well into the first half here. What are you looking for as our Chevy keys to the match coming a little late here tonight, but what do you want to see here? The first thing you want to see is you want to see organization from everybody. You want to see them all on the same page, no real gaps, which I think we've done, a, a soccer has done a good job so far of that. And next is just have some aggressiveness, take the game to Salt Lake, which again, I think Sacramento did. And as a defender, I think defensively, what I want to see is I want to see if, if Salt Lake. Here's McCrary keeping it on the ground. Uwasa was there, a follow up, but it just goes wide. As Sam Warner nearly poked in the game's first goal for Sacramento. We had a good stop from Ochoa, and that one about two feet wide. We could easily be tied here, Kevin. Yeah, I know. Uh, a, a very good strike by Sam Warner. You see him flip flopped on the other side, playing the right wing now. Good ball in the box by McCrary. Don't mind that at all. And then Johnny on the spot right there. Mr. Wheeler strikes it nicely. Look at this attack here, the pressure from Sacramento. Yeah, make him kick it. And the one knock that I have on Ochoa, I think his distribution could be a little bit better. Make him make, him make that decision. Formella tried to find Wheeler a moment in stride. Back to Mahoney to circle this possession back to the front. Mark Briggs loves to see this team move forward. He does not want to see balls played back unless absolutely needed. He wants their first instinct to try to break lines. A good idea from Hayden Sargis and just a step slow as Villian Bijev had the inside track. And you're going to see a lot more of that this year, Kevin. Balls through the middle of the spine, try to see if they can get some of these central defenders in 1v1 situations. Yeah, that's you know one of the assets and attributes that you want from your center back. You want to have good entry passes, good delivery. You see Hayden, Sar Hayden Sargis with that left foot. A good ball in the box and a good run. And those are the kind of things you want to see. You want to see link up play. You talk keys to the match. You want to see these guys linking up well, well together, Rob, and, and connecting and communicating. Nice thing so far. I don't know about that. But now it's a, a matter of these guys, you know, don't get complacent, stay confident, stick to the game plan, go out there and, like I said, try to chip away at this two-goal lead. It was Alvin Jones with a spectacular strike in the 27th on a free kick. And then Garcia able to break that back line in the 30th. And that's where we stand here in Sacramento as the Republic trail two to nothing. It's been a tough go for Sacramento against the Real Monarchs. The two, six, and five, and just one, two, and four here at home. I mean, this is a team that has really given them trouble. The last win here was an Adam John goal in the 47th minute, a one nothing victory back in 2016, Kevin. Yeah, you know, you think about it, and <laughs> I mean, it, it, I feel like Real always gives us a tough game, specifically here. I mean, you could credit them, but it is a club that has a fantastic academy youth program that brings a lot of talented players that have played together for a long time. And you look at LA and some of the other ones, you know, the guys are still working out how to play together. But these are guys who've played since they're 13, 14 years old. And it's not like Sacramento hasn't had a lot of success. It's always odd when you see a team that's able to really dominate a Republic team because it's very rare. This one's kept to the middle, back to Jones, who has the game's first goal. Sent out of play. And it's gonna be interesting too, Kevin, is here's a lot of these guys on MLS contracts. We're probably not gonna see many of these players in the regular season for the Real Monarchs. You might see one or two at times, but really not as strong of this a, a lineup of this caliber 
and that is this strong. Maybe too many touches for Iwasa there, a turnover. Skondrich able to maybe win the ball back for a moment. A good step from Iwasa. When you play the MLS and you're looking at preseason matches and how you played, I know it's so hard to judge what preseason means for you, but when you're trying maybe not to look at results so much, what are you ultimately trying to get out of preseason as a player? The player, you want to get your fitness. You want to get, you know, game shape, game fitness as quick as you can. Uh, and really, it's kind of a, a, a double-edged sword. Yeah, you don't look at results. You don't really, I mean, that's not the most important thing, in my opinion, if you're the manager. But at the same time, there's a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a skill that you can pick up in, in, in winning matches, you know? Like, it's, you figure out ways to win. And I think that's a quality that, that some teams, you know, you need to develop a little bit. So it's kind of like balancing those two things. Yeah, you want to go out there and, and get results. But if you're not getting the wins every time and the team's developing and, and progressing the right. That better be foul. And no. Nope. Public State on their feet, and Lou. Another win. Formella over the top. He's looking for Bijev. Bijev not able to get it cleanly. But here comes the pressure from Barron, and Barron is taken down from behind by Harris. And we will have a yellow card. That is the third. And another great look here for Sacramento just outside the 18. And you got Wheeler down on the, on the opposite end there. He goes in and wins that ball. Was able to play it out to Formella and then goes down immediately. So, see what's going on there. But yeah, from behind, Deion Harris, just a bit clumsy. Good step there by Barahona. Actually, does a great job stepping in front of uh, of Harris. Really like what we've seen from Barahona this preseason as well. He's been yeah. much more attack minded, flying up that left flank being back in the position where he needs to be. I think there's plenty of times last year we seemed a little lost. He didn't know, he was kind of in between two minds, as you like to say a lot. Have you kind of assess here, just even tonight in this first 40 minutes? Yeah, it looks solid. You know, again, he's one of those players, you get your fitness in, in in the preseason, get back to, to game shape. And I think, again, as any player, you come in from a different country in a new system, uh, it's different. It's going to take a while to, to, to get settled. And I think this is where you expect, or at least I expect to see a fully 100% Juan Barahona this year. This is a great opportunity for Bijev. Barahona to the right, Bijev to the left. It will be Bijev. Bijev keeping it low. It's 0 for 2 tonight as they've tried to squeak it through that first line. It just has not. I, 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 honestly, I don't, I don't know if that's just a missed strike. There's no way that ball makes sense to be played on the ground. I'd like to see Bijev have a, have, a tar have a go on target, in fact. Toro Rodriguez. Is it back? Everton. There's Jones. Well done by A mistake there. B. Jeff able to get on it. Republic playing through the middle. And that pocket collapsing as bailed out as Iwasa was able to draw the foul. How about Cameron Iwasa, though? A fantastic season a year ago. 16 goals. He was top six in all of USL Championship. And as a career, he has 48 in a Republic uniform. Kevin, he's the top 10 of the USL all time at this point. Yeah, I mean, consistently year over year. See, Kim came in after his year preseason in Montreal, I believe, came back to Sacramento, had a, had a stint with, a, the can with Kansas City. And it's just been consistent as can be. And, you know, 10 goals a year type guy. And really kind of putting his name, etching his name in the record books for the USL and obviously Sacramento Republic. I think one of the big question marks is who can you pair with them? And we saw Thomas Ine Voltson last year and those two were quite a pair, but Ine Voltson wanted to move back down to Southern California. And a foul is drawn by Rona with a late elbow to the face of Rodriguez. Getting a bit chippy out there. It doesn't feel like a preseason match, that's for sure. But a lot of big question for Sacramento, Kevin, is who do you pair with this guy? And I think that is Formella might be an answer. Here's a holding guy. You know, reminds me more of like a Justin Braun type of striker. Can you know, make a run here and there, but he's really going to do well holding up and laying that ball off to Cam as he comes through. Yeah, that's that link up play. You want to see him back to goal and have Cam run, making runs right around the face underneath him. And Amy Volton did a great job. They paired up really nice. Amy Volton and Yawasa last year. 
Hopefully you can see Tormella, who will likely get many more minutes now. He was in and out, came on as a sub primarily for Simon Elliott. We've also got guys like Carlton Belmar on the bench. Mahoney's going to try to sneak this one through. That's a tough ball to get through, but Wheeler will get the second opportunity. Wants to try to make something happen. Down. Again, though, look, out, look how quick that pressure is coming, Rob. I mean, that's, a, that's a, not ideal to have the foul there, but as soon as the ball turns over, you see, it, you see Sacramento. So, foot on the gas. Let's go get this ball back as quick as we can. You know, another thing, uh, interesting talking to Todd and, and talking to Coach Briggs is, you know, what's, what's uh, where are the holes in the lineup? Where are you, what are you, who are you guys shopping for? What's, what's, on the, what's on the list? And I think Todd, both Todd and Mark were saying, you know, hey, I think we're, I think we're good. I think we got what we need right now, uh, you know, barring injuries and things like that. But as of right now, it seems to be this is, this is the roster that they're going to, that we're going to see probably moving in for the rest of, <laughs> for the start of the season. Well, and we haven't even talked about it, but not in the lineup tonight because of injuries. Shannon Gomez, Jaime Villarreal dealing with those stuff, Thomas Hilliard Arce, who we mentioned earlier, and of course, the biggest sign in the offseason, Rodrigo Lopez, a little banged up with a knee and he injury that he suffered against Seattle, and they're just being precautious with him. He said he feels pretty good and probably could force it, wants to see if he can make a run for it next week at the home opener well but done. he's also an understanding that there's no reason to push this this earlier in the season so you've got some quality guys that haven't really suited up for you in the last couple weeks here's a ball played in and he was with it don't mind that i like the effort it was a near goal run by Iwasa, and just another good look for Sacramento. Different points of the attack tonight. Well, I think you're going to see this, too. You're going to have a pretty uh, free-flowing front three, if you will. Uh, good chance here. And Bijev is upended. Good, Alvin Jones. Good, hard hard fair tackle. Hopefully he's okay. But you'll see a free-flowing a free front three. Any volts, or excuse me, uh, Formella's probably going to be that guy that's going to stay on the, po the point. But between Cam, uh, Bijev, and Sam Warner, you see them, they've already flipped. Here's another look at this. Just a hard tackle. Uh, Bijev and Warner have already flipped once today, meaning they've switched sides. And now you've got these guys on the, they're playing inverted, right? So you got your right footed player on the left, and then your left footed player on the right, so they can come into to the pitch and try to connect with a Cam Loss or Formella. But I like to see that. I think uh, Coach Briggs is giving these guys the opportunity and wants them to go out. And if need be, you know, you make the decisions, have it be free flowing, let it evolve organically. Have a go. Well, the pressure has been suffocating, and possession wise, Sacramento really has been the better club tonight. I mean, you didn't know the score. Now, you wouldn't think Republic are down to another, but it was really three good possessions by Salt Lake City. One led to the free kick that was the game's first goal. But overall, the Republic have looked good. Over the top, Barona goes, holding on, is Formella now making a run to the outside, battling shoulder to shoulder. Iwasa with Eric Holt, the center back, bringing him all the way out of position. And Barona going down just a little bit too easy. Andrew Wheeler Amato, the Harvard standout, 25 years of age, signed in the offseason. And here's a break. Garcia moving forward into the attack. Skundrich breaking it up. Guys just chew up ground, Skundrich and Wheeler. Good job by Skundrich to win that ball. Iwasa playing it forward for BJ. BJ into the attack, looking for a little bit of space. We'll keep it on the ground. Here's Iwasa, just couldn't get a toe on it. And we'll cut it back in and concedes. And that will be the final whistle. Republic not able to get a final shot off there in the last moments of the first half. And Real Monarchs of Salt Lake City come into this one. It's Jones, it's Garcia with goals three minutes apart. And that is the difference here in Sacramento. We'll go to the break here and then we'll come back for the second half of action. Kevin Goldthier, Rob McAllister with you. It is the Real Monarchs with the advantage as we head to the break. This is the look of a 12-year-old cancer survivor. 
a boy who spent a quarter of his life fighting to get a chance at the rest. A boy whose cancer took his knee, but we gave him back the use of his leg. For extraordinary breakthroughs and everyday childhoods, UC Davis Health offers primary care and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. UC Davis Health, discovering healthy. Back here in Sacramento, Real Monarchs with a 2 nothing lead on the Republic. But as we hear at the break, there was uh, quite an excitement around this city last fall. And if you've been in a cave, well, it's time to climb out of it and we'll update you right now because what a month of October it was. After years of work and negotiations, Major League Soccer is coming to Sacramento. Today is the day Sacramento takes the next leap, and it's certainly one of those moments that we will remember for the rest of our life. This one was on again and off again, and it could have ended up being our 24th team as opposed to our 29th team, but uh, we never lost faith. The mayor and the city uh, stood behind the effort, and the fact that the city really wanted it to happen uh, really motivated us. This is a city that's super supportive. I mean, they couldn't be more excited about what's going on. This group of people have, have you know, stayed behind this team from day one. And still, with all of the ups and downs of is this going to happen, is it not going to happen, they've just bought in and they had unrelenting support. Major League Soccer. We did it, we did it, we did it. Never thought we'd see the day. You knew it could happen, but didn't know what it looked like. This is better than I ever met. Unbelievable. Greetings, Sacramento. How are we doing today? Those who doubt Sacramento simply don't know Sacramento. We're in the business of doing the extraordinary things each and every day. Today is not the day we've all been waiting for. Today is the day we've all been fighting for. There's been literally five years of dedication, of fortitude, of faith of so many people, many of them that are on this stage and many of them that are in the room. That dream started with all of you who just wouldn't quit. And it was fed by all of you, our passionate fans. And you never doubted, you never gave up, and you never lost faith in your city. 
So now it gives me great pleasure to announce Sacramento as the 29th MLS team. When I walk in today, and you kind of see you know, our colors and our city name. And after so many times seeing a different city name, you're just kind of sitting there and feeling like a gut punch to walk in and just, it's your city's name. This is the look of a 12-year-old cancer survivor. A boy who spent a quarter of his life fighting to get a chance at the rest. A boy whose cancer took his knee but we gave him back the use of his leg. For extraordinary breakthroughs and everyday childhoods, UC Davis Health offers primary care and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. UC Davis Health, discovering healthy. USL Championship preseason. Sacramento, Real Monarchs from Salt Lake City. And an unfortunate uh, go around for a club down in the south area as they came out to practice only to find that everything was gone. That way, it was not going to sit well with the Sacramento Republic, and they stepped up in a big way. Hey, sir. How are you doing? Knowing Good, fresh. Brilliant. Nice meeting you. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Guys, and then I call my wife and say, the container is on fire. Police is there and the fire department is there. So go check it out. I was thinking that this was gonna be on the ground, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, it's hard. It's hard, you know, it's hard because things happen. This is the third time. We're here in Stockton where Select FC as a club practices here on this field. Unfortunately, uh, they've had their equipment stolen, uh, their storage been vandalized, so along with Mayor Tubbs, City of Stockton, community partners, we want to make sure they have a safe place to play, they have equipment to, to play with so they can worry about what they should, which is being good teammates to each other. You know, a city is like a team. And you think when you're playing in soccer with your team, sometimes you're winning, sometimes you're losing, but no matter what, you guys all come together, and then when you win, it feels really good. This trailer being burned and stolen, that was a loss for us. We were losing. But instead of pointing fingers or being upset, the team, the community came together, partnered with the Sac Republic, partnered with other folks in the community, and now we have new trailers, new balls, etc. So the first thing I want you guys to remember is that the team is always better, the community is always better, even when something bad happens. The more, the more opportunities you get to play this game and the more opportunities you get to be around a group of people and understand what a group of people can accomplish, it's a beautiful thing. So I'm glad we've managed to get, get your storage unit back together and give you, you guys some new equipment and be able to play the game that we all love.
This is the look of a 12-year-old cancer survivor. A boy who spent a quarter of his life fighting to get a chance at the rest. A boy whose cancer took his knee, but we gave him back the use of his leg. For extraordinary breakthroughs and everyday childhoods, UC Davis Health offers primary care and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. UC Davis Health, discovering healthy. and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. Back here in Sacramento, and the fans, I don't know if they're enjoying it quite yet, Kevin, but they're, they've seen a lot of quality play, and they're getting a snapshot of what this team is going to be all about here in 2020. We've had some good play. We've had some rough play, but let's take a look. Halftime highlights powered by Smud. You really like that first 25 minutes from Sacramento. They were pressing. They were compact. Had a really good Cam also had a really good chance. We had a couple of decent chances, I think, that, uh, you know, this is probably a little look right here from Cam, but uh, yeah, first 25 minutes, they look great. I really think Cam probably should have done better with this, to be honest. He's got a pretty clean look from about 16 yards out. Just like to see me pass the ball. It's a little bit of pressure there, but still, maybe, maybe a little bit better shot would have been ideal, but put it on target, test the goalkeeper, good job, and then obviously this Thunderbolt from 40 yards out where the bottom of the ball just fell out of it. Alvin Jones, a knuckler. I mean, from up here, it was hard to see why no one moved, and you can I mean, look, look it, it goes around Iwasa, Dude, who's nuts. on the left side, and then peels to the right. Unbelievable strike. One of the best set pieces we've seen here. Probably sends Roro in the body miracle. So bad again, giveaway, bad giveaway from Sam Warner here. Not the best defending between your, you know, your center back and Wheeler Mahoney there. Just a good finish actually. And that was Garcia, the Colombian who was, played it before was Iloski, the UCLA standout, and just a nice goal. That's where we stand really. I mean, you had another opportunity from the Real Monarchs, but for Sacramento. There were some good chances, good overlapping runs, guys making runs the box. You have three, four, five guys here, and a strike that's played back. When you're in the box, we, good things happen, Kevin. Yeah, it yeah. almost happened you gotta there. Put your, you got to put yourself in good positions, and I think Sacramento's doing a good job here in the first 45 minutes. Obviously, nothing to show for it, but still, 45, 45 more minutes to go. You're in a preseason game. Be interesting to see what the message was from, from Mark Briggs down in the locker room, but it's got to be just go out there, keep performing. Don't, don't, you know, no panic buttons going to be hit yet. Just go, go out there and perform. Well, the season kicks off on March 7th here against FC Tulsa, and then on the road for two, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and then back for that Wednesday matchup, Reno 1868, and then OKC Energy. A pretty solid start to the season. Las Vegas had an up and down year. LA Galaxy is always fun. Reno was fantastic last season. Tulsa's going to be better. Kevin, this is not going to be an early start. Uh, this is, is uh, for whatever Easy reason, start. it's this season I'm really looking forward to. I mean, not only looking forward to see what Sacramento can do, but also see these other teams. I think a lot of these clubs that, that uh, you know, are the Tulsa's of the world, the OKC's of the world, the Rio Grande Valley's of the world, I think these teams, and now the level's been brought up so much, 
so much higher than it was five years ago, Rob, that now everybody is like, there's no more, you know, no more messing around here. This is, this is serious stuff for USL. And I'm excited to see what these clubs outside of Sacramento, I think Sacramento's been doing it right for, for, for seven years, but um, I think everyone's doing it right now. And we've almost taken it for granted that six straight years of postseason burst. No other team has done that in the entire league. And so we're used to success here. We demand success. And you know what? This is a team, as we've seen in preseason, that's been pretty darn good. Can they go all the way? Well, we've got from now until October to figure it out. But right. we've got still plenty of time here in the next 45. We've got a substitution uh, coming to looks for Real Monarchs. Not very clear. We're going to find out. And it's going to be on the Republic side. So Carlton Belmar into the match. Been looking forward to see Belmar, seeing him in action. And here's our opportunity. And the one thing we heard from Mark Briggs about Carlton Belmar is that he had a tough go a year ago and just couldn't really quite fit in like he had hoped in Nashville. Came here and right out of the gate was maybe trying to do too much. I mean, you look. What he had typically done, it was Swope Park. He had 24 goals in two seasons. Goes to Nashville, has just three goals, and was almost trying to force himself into doing everything instead of really focusing on what he does best. That's breaking lines and scoring goals. How do you feel about this move here? Oh, yeah, he's an absolute stud of an athlete. So fun to see him, you know, open up and, and run around and, and, you know, strap on the kit for, for the Republic. But really, I think you said it perfectly. You know, he's been focusing and doing things that really aren't his strong suit or his, you know, his, his, his assets or attributes. And, and Mark Briggs even said, you know, it's coming here. He's going to have to, his confidence looks a little bit sh uh, shook because of his performance last year in terms of how many goals he scored. That's great. great move by Villian Bjeb. Bjeb gets it in. Here's a little tap and opportunity. Comes to Belmar. First An unbelievable <laughs> strike from Bjeb to put it into the mix. And then it's Belmar to clean it at the doorstep and it's two to one in the first minute of the second half here in Sacramento. Yeah, very fortunate, there you go. Strikers goal on the doorstep, right place at the right time. But good job by Bijev, kind of dips his shoulders thinking he's gonna go outside but cuts inside and absolutely leaves Alvin Jones in the dust and then not the best ball across the face of the goal but still gets it, is it enough to get it to that back post. See a little dip of his shoulder and Alvin Jones is just lost. And he looks like he was trying to play that. Look, me initially, I thought he was going to try to get something playing, on he's it. He's definitely playing that across face. But yeah. again, that's a striker's goal. This is, uh, I think, yeah, his first touch here at Popper Murphy's Park is in the back of the net. How many guys in the box, Kevin? A lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, we've <laughs> screamed about it for so long. Yeah. And then Belmar making his debut in front of these fans, able to get one in. It's preseason. But nonetheless, he has shown that he can play. He had a great game against Oakland Roots and a victory against the lower level side that is in their inaugural season and now gets one as it comes into this match. Another thing Briggs, Mark Briggs mentioned, you know, he's just got the right attitude. He comes in, you know, I think that's a bit tough for him. There are certain moments where he's being, you know, told that, you know, you're not going to be part of the starting 11. Uh, and as a player of his caliber, I think he go, he obviously he's going to be disappointed, but he's done all the right things and has a great attitude. He's sticking around after training. First one there, last in the leaf sort of attitude. Um, so uh, around, uh, all, all around good guy and the right person to have in the locker room and hopefully he can hit his, uh, hit his stride and, and find that goal scoring form he had two years ago. See if the Republican tie this up here. Uh, just a little bit off the mark from McCrary. Scundridge battling, look, look at, at that, those two collapsing guys. Look at those two in guys. the midfield. Those two Wheeler. guys have been so much fun to watch this year. And how is that as a, I know you typically play on the back line. When you're playing against midfielders like that, it's got to be your worst nightmare. Well, you don't, you don't really have, it's not one of them, there's two of them. And, and I think what we're, we're seeing and what we're hearing about these guys is they, they cover so much ground, um, that box-to-box -box mentality. Um, and, and to have one of those guys on your squad doing that, that was, that's what Skundrich was last year. But now to have two of them, I think it's just going to be a midfielder's nightmare and even like a withdrawn forward's nightmare because you have to deal with these guys constantly. So Sacramento able to cut the lead in half after BJF places one in to the box and then it's cleaning it up is Carlton Belmar. Belmar originally out of Virginia Beach, 27 years of age. He feels like he's in his prime. It's time to take him, you know, make that move and maybe went to Nashville thinking, okay, this is an opportunity to move up to MLS. Didn't really fit his quite system. So now he's uh, latching on here and hoping to make a name for himself once again. Ball driven in. Lofted back post. Here's Belmar again. Gets ahead to it. Sargis was in the neighborhood as well. 
as it was lofted from Varona on the set piece. Last year, Kevin, it was a team where you look at Real Monarchs in fourth place, scored 71 goals. Sacramento just had 55, and they were just three spots behind them. And 49 of them came inside the box, and many in the exact same fashion. So it'll be interesting to see where they come from this year as a different style of play. Mark Briggs wants to keep the ball on the ground, move it forward, quick, few touches. And I think with these players, enjoys that they have a very clear understanding of what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. Yeah, it comes down top bottom as, you know, Briggs and his staff, you know, being consistent and being communicative, which I think has been a big, big plus this season. I think a lot of the players are now, they know what's, they better know what's expected of them, I think. Peeling off. And Mahoney from the center back position all the way up. Grunder has to play it back to clear out himself out of trouble. Nicely done by Sacram. All right, so Kevin, so we, we've seen the two goals and maybe a little shocking for some of the fans here, but Real Monarchs, this is not really the Real Monarchs. Seven of the 11 in the starting 11 here tonight on MLS contracts, typically playing with the first team. And uh, they got an opportunity to get some more minutes for some guys before the MLS season really gets kicked off. It's, you know, started today. So, how do you compare what this is? Is this a good test? I mean, is this what you want to see as Mark Briggs? Yeah, I mean, a, a good test. Yeah, absolutely, you can look at it that way. I think it's um, interesting tactics, you know, or interesting strategy here for, for the Monarchs. you got, you know, opening weekends next weekend, and, and you have uh, a roster that's not even going to be anywhere near what it's going to look like next week. So it's just interesting, interesting strategy. I'm sure there's a game plan behind it. Um, unsure what that really is. But um, for Sacramento, I think you look at it as a good test. It's an opportunity to play against better quality players. And well, go you're challenge right. yourself. Well, the people that, or the players we might see it might be Ochoa and Taylor Pay. I mean, it might be the only two you see next week. It's hard to see how it all shake out. Maybe a Sam Brown. This ball sent in. And Adam Grinwis earning the starting nod over Rafa Diaz. And Grinwis, a top 100. Player and there's a ball through, breaking line, Sam Warner. He's got Carlton Belmar and cutting it just off as Real Monarchs get back. And that's a tough ball. It was a near post run, was trying to separate himself from the defense. Just pretty decent defending. Sacramento right back at it again. Look at Belmar battling against Holt, try to get it toward goal just to make something happen there. But again, you get three guys in the box waiting for Belmar on the other side. Obviously, we've got a preseason here, stepping Hayden Sargis. Sargis with a good left foot. And it's an asset that they really like and a reason that he was signed to a professional contract. Good tackle. McCrary with a great step, keeps it in play. Garcia Ooh. will come back for it. And McCrary still doing work and earns the throw in. The crowd loving it here in Sacramento. <laughs> That's some fun right there. And he's walking. <laughs> and I'll tell the referees, tell McCrary, you better, you better walk it back. I don't know if he's chatting at the, the fourth official right there. I don't know what he's doing. But good piece now of he, skill he, here, good athleticism. I think he's got Garcia. And well played by the crafty veteran who was formerly with the Seattle Sounders of MLS for a couple of seasons. And now playing the right back. Okay, Kevin, so now we have a little bit of time. Obviously, it's preseason. You know, there's... We can break down every single play, but I, I want to talk a little bit about some of the players out on the pitch and, and who you think uh, will maybe be a standout player, who's doing what that you really like. And well, I guess we'll start uh, really with the goalkeeper. And he was a top target, Adam Grinwis. They had a list of about 100 goalkeepers. And Todd Dunham had said this was their number one guy they were hoping to get, and they land him out of Orlando. I think it's a great pickup. And you know, the fact that you know these guys have targets, Todd and, and his staff, all over the place across the board and, and rarely do you end up getting you know your top target but this is a, a, a goalkeeper great resume really good shot stopper and good distribution out of the back uh, you, you know just 27 years old uh, the, the right person the right time for Sacramento and uh, you know that's what I like about him I, the, the shops shot stopping ability is um, is massive and, and uh, you know the last goalkeeper we had that I think really had that was Josh Cohen 
and you need a goalkeeper that can do that and really keep you in games, right? You know, it, it earn you the, those draws when you need them, earn you those three points when you, when you need it. So um, really looking forward to him seeing what he can do this year for, for Sacramento and got a solid goalkeeper between the pipes this year. And a foul on the ball. It'll be Real Monarchs to reset. And as we move along that line, we talked a little bit about Hayden Sargis, obviously a young player. Going to be exciting to see how he grows. Uh, Matt Mahoney we talked a little bit about. But what do you think uh, is the, the number one thing Matt Mahoney should look to do this year? How does he make that step up? What Consist does that look like Consistency. For for me, it's consistent. Oh, here's that good run. Ball for Garcia, and here Grinwis has to come out of his box and makes a diving stop. And McCrary maybe bumped Garcia off just enough, and the pressure coming from Salt Lake City. Yeah, so back to Mahoney. I think consistency is the one thing that, that uh, I don't think it's an issue with him, but I think he needs to come out week in and week out. And, and honestly, too, another part, that another thing that I think can really improve his game is, is now he's going to be a leader. If you, if, you know, Iwasa, is he onside? Quick touch, and the flag goes up. You know, he's going to be partnered with, with a young 17-year-old, an athletic, strong 17-year-old at that. But um, he's going to need to be vocal. He's going to uh, uh, need to be a leader in the back. And, and he's going to need to be the guy in the back. So that's what I want to see from him. I think uh, the quality that he has is there. Consistency and takes some leadership. Looks like he's just offside. Flag goes up anyways. Yeah, barely. About a step, it's a maybe. Bit of a risk right there if you're Taylor Pay. Okay, so outside backs, Jordan McCrary on the right. You have Juan Barona. We talked a little bit about Barona and being fit, now being settled here the first time he's playing outside of El Salvador. So look at the former MLS veteran uh, out of North Carolina, Jordan McCrary. Let's take a chance here. Hold on one second. Get Sending it back, Bjev, and this one's going to be lofted in, looking for Belmar. Belmar pushed off, and the people, fans want to hear something. Warner cleans it up. Here's Bjev. Now it's settled down. Now it's Sargis, and he's waved offside. Is that Iwasa? Excuse me, that was Cameron Iwasa. Again, offside. So Jordan McCrary. Jordan McCrary. Yeah, I want to see him get up and down that right flank more. I want to see him, you know, two, three, four times a half. I want to see services in the box and consistency on those services. I think he's got the athleticism. I think he's got the skill, but getting up and and and, and using that athleticism and whipping balls in the box is what I want to see. I mean, defensively, he's an absolute stud. He's one of those guys, too. You beat him once, you're probably going to have to beat him again because he's going to catch up with you. Um, uh, so defensively, I think he's as solid as you can get. I'd just like to see him maybe get involved in the attack a little bit more, take, take uh, maybe a little bit more risks um, going forward and be okay with that. And we mentioned the duo of Drew Skundrich and uh, Andrew Wheeler. Both of them have a motor. We know that. Uh, they cover a lot of ground, very athletic. So what does success to you look like? Maybe we're looking at August at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, it's, it's one of those positions, too. It's not the sexiest. So you it's know. not goals for you? Well, well no, I think, I think ultimately for a guy like Skundrich um, specifically, and this is I'm, I'm speaking about Skundrich because I've seen him play much more than, than, than Wheeler, but in that final third, I feel like Skundrich is a guy that his... his uh, Good switch from McCrary. McCrary's going to lock one back post and peeling away will be Villian Bijan. He needs to settle himself down, Skundrich, excuse me, in that final third when he gets an opportunity in the box. Slow it down. Well, take, we saw that against San Jose. Right, right. So he's getting there. So last year, I think there's opportunities where um, he wouldn't be my first choice to be to, to be on the, the end of a cross. If you know what I mean? It's not that he's a bad finisher. I think there's better finishers on the on the club than, than Skundrich. So um, you know, the, the dirty work that they're going to have to do, it's an unsung job. So they'll keep going. Keep be, being a pit bull, break things up, make it difficult for other teams, which they do a great job, or at least Skundrich does a great job of it, but but because he make, has that I ability. Make yourself a part of the scouting report for the next Because week. he has ability in the motor to get up and down, he's going to find himself in the final third and find himself on the end of some crosses. Bjev has a bit of room. Here's Belmar on the other end of it, and a diving save out of his box because David Ochoa, the 19-year-old from Southern California. Good run. Good job there. But that's what I want to see from Scunter. I think like, uh, the big thing is he's, he's, he's athletic enough. He's going to find himself in good spots. Talk us through this But real when quick. you get to those good spots, you've got to take your chance. That's just a good ball across the, the box. You'd like to see Carlton Belmar maybe, if he's a half a second quicker, try to get in front, make that run towards the near post so you can cut off that angle from Ochoa. Maybe at Cam there, too, looked about spacing. But So we'll see how they develop. I know that the coach staff has been very impressed with the duo there. So we'll see. Uh, how that fits in for Jaime Villarreal with a very good season last year, dealing with a bit of a hamstring issue. Real Monarchs lead 2-1. to one. Sacramento getting a goal by Carrington Belmar as Billion BJ played one from the left side. This will be a throw, so let's move up in 
to that next line. Let's talk about Villian Bijev. One goal, three assists, really a down year for a guy we've seen fantastic stats from. Of course, he led the USL in assists with 10 in 2016, came on his loan a couple of years next season, and then has had some up and down, six goals, five assists in 2018. And what does this look like for you? I think there was a little bit of consistency with him last year and, and almost an, I don't know if effort's the right word, but a desire to get goals or desire to play balls forward. Yeah, I think it, it, he wasn't, in my opinion, didn't, didn't have that little bite, that edge that he typically has last year. And I don't know if it's, you know, being burnt out. Um, you know, that's something that, that, that players you deal with, you go season to season, and sometimes you're just, you know, you don't have everything that you want. That, that bite isn't there. That last gear isn't there. And hopefully, you know, you know, off season, I think BJ get away from the game a little bit, go, uh, go, go, get that bite, get that passion back. I think that's what I want to see from him this year. I think he's obviously got the skills, got the technique, but now it's it's let's go let's go out there and have that killer instinct, and take your chances when you get them, and create more chances when you can. Sam Warner, I mean, seven goals, five assists. Really a standout, a surprise player, I think, for most fans. Came in here after just one year of professional play and, and didn't get a lot of time at all. You know, comes from Stanford, three college cups, and was a big time a player. Ended up uh, scoring the game winning goal in 2017 for them. Still a young guy. Talk about a motor and an effort constantly. We saw him put this team on his back. Here he is working to his left side. He loves to sneak into that middle there. Wasn't able to get a shot off, but. That's the type of play we see from Sam Warner so often. Opportunity playing it forward. Bob Rona, here's Cameron Wassa. Can he tie the game and save by Ochoa? An unbelievable arm stretched effort from David Ochoa that keeps it two to one. Uh, he's going back to where that play started. It's a great ball from Barahona, but uh, again, a turnover after they lose, they lose the ball, Sacramento doesn't, they get the ball right back. Barahona takes a touch, great entry pass. It looks like Cam just stumbles under his own feet a little bit right there, but. Again, wonderful opportunity. Look at this ball just broke two lines, Kev. And you see a stumble right here. Oh, you got tripped up. Yeah, you, that, that's a sure thing. Hopefully he's getting that out of his system Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 you know, like you ask, what do you want to get out of games like today? What's the goal? You want to see your striker finish that. You don't want to be thinking like, oh, hopefully next week that's not going to be an issue. So, uh, Cam, two chances, two solid chances today. Um, nothing, nothing to write home about, but... Uh, I guess it's a good problem to have. He's getting himself in good positions. And here's a guy that we know can score. So yep. hopefully that'll be corrected. So Sam, what do we kind of led you in a little bit about what what does success look for? Does it is it more goals, more assists? What does that look for you as, as an improvement from last year, which is a really big step up for him? Yeah, and I think I mean more goals and more assists for sure. I think uh, he's got this, the skill and the quality offside. Um, and really, I think a big year for um, Sam Warner for his career. You know what I mean? You're at a position now where uh, y you're comfortable here in Sacramento. You've been here for a year, 24 years old. Uh, you know, if you have aspirations to go to, you know, different leagues and higher leagues, this is an important year, in my opinion, in Sam's career to go out and really make a name for himself. And I think you do, so, do that by, by scoring more goals, Rob. I mean, pretty simple. Make yourself known. Belmar giving chase on Ochoa has made a couple of really nice stops tonight to keep his team ahead two to one. All right, for Kamawasa, we've seen him break. He's got the club record and goal scored. Um, he's a top 10 player really in the USL last year. He's steadily improved, but now at the age of 27. McCrary, McCrary's gonna leave this one down low and it was an opportunity for Belmar broken up by Taylor Pay. So for Cam Rossa, what does success look like for him? I mean, this is a guy who's continued to kind of push goals, the bar. Goals, 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 I mean, I, that's just. Is it a 20 goal that, year? That's your strike. I mean, how does he improve what, what success look like? I mean, he's got to have probably 15 to 20 goals. It would be, I think, a pretty good lofty goal for him to, to set, and it's achievable goal. Um, but end of the day, as a striker, right? What's your job? Score goals, end of story. Warner, a little bit of pressure coming and maybe didn't turn the right way. This poor first touch just really set himself up for success. All right, let's go through this. Derek Formella. He started the match here tonight and came off at the break. And uh, obviously improvement for him. Two goals, 12 assists. In and out of the lineup a little bit and not so much of a 
a player that we could say, you're going to get this at Formella last year. There was ups and downs. Obviously, his father passed away, a very emotional time. And being away as far as he was, kind of settling in, he seems more confident, even at training this year. He just seems like, I have the confidence now. I know I'm a part of this. I feel wanted. And I feel I can make an impact. And I think that alone will probably see an uptick could be eight to ten goals this year from football. Yeah, I think what, what he needs to really do is he's got to figure out a way to make sure that you're linking up nicely with, with Kamawasa, Bijev, and and um, Sam Warner on the outside. I think if he's able to do that, I mean, that's got to be, again, goals, goals, goals for him. Striker, right? So he's going to need to come out and perform and statistically perform. So, um, But I think that comes from him connecting connecting with the, with the players up front with them, you know what I mean? And they've liked what they've seen between the two of them in preseason. Cam, just on the end line, takes a deflection. Eric Holt is there. We mentioned Carlton Belmar, what he has done. Let's go to the bench, and uh, probably the name everyone wants to hear you talk about, Kevin. And, of course, the return of the legend of Rodrigo Lopez and what he meant to this team in 2014 and obviously left after the second season, had aspirations, went to Mexico, played very well in the first and second divisions there, and now he is back. What do you expect from him this year? I mean, obviously, he's, he's working off some little bit of injury, but he, he feels good. Let's take a look at this injury. Looks like it's maybe a hamstring. Maybe work him out. Bit of an awkward play. Pulling up, looks like a hamstring. Yeah. Uh, um, so Ro, back to Roro. So Dayon Harris is on the ground. So back to so Rodrigo Lopez, what a success for him. I don't know, I mean, the bar set pretty high for when he was here last. I, I, I've said this before, but uh, maybe the first time on air, it, I've never seen, he, he controlled the game more than anybody that I'd ever seen in the USL. And so when he was on the field, um, he maestroed it. Like he was the guy, the ball was at his feet, he was making the right passes. Um, really, really high level player for the USL um, five years ago. Goes down to Mexico, has a really good career. I mean, makes it makes his way up to um, the first division in Mexico pretty quickly. And, you know, uh, self-admittedly quicker than he anticipated, which is kind of interesting to hear him say. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a, a big question mark. It, it, I don't know what's going to you know, is, is it going to be the same row row? Is he going to be the guy playing out wide? Is this, does this system work for, for the row row where he can be um, uh, uh, set himself up for the most success? Meaning, because he played like a right uh, a right outside midfielder, right? That had freedom. But he had freedom. He'd always come inside. And so when he'd come inside, he'd always be kind of left alone because it's no no communication between, you know, that their outside mid and their center mids talking about, you know, row row. Come. So we had a lot of time and a lot of space on the ball. And that's like that's that 4-4-2 formation. So now we're playing about a four, we're playing a 4-3-3. It's different. Um, so I don't know. I I, I I don't know what success looks like for Roro. Is it 10 goals and 10 assists? I don't know. Um, I hope so. I hope that's what he's going to be putting up. Uh, tell you what, I mean, the, the fans specifically, um, I think have a, a pretty high high level or high standard or expectations for for Roro. So um, another really interesting storyline for for this year. And I, I think you hit on it. Is it the fit? Like, how is he going to fit into this club? And with a player of that talent, you want to use his skills to better your club and put him in positions that is not favorable to that. I think the one thing that we will see well is Hayden Sard just a little mistake there and able to win that back at least for a throw and thwart the attack from the Real Monarchs. Is Mark Briggs has an opportunity here to put in a guy that can really change the dynamic of a game at any moment. So we'll see how that plays out. He's got to get healthy and fit first. And so a substitution coming for the Real Monarchs as we are approaching the 70th minute. And that'll be Noah Powder in one of the USL's top players. It's been on the list. He's been a 20 under 20, play with the Red Bulls. Playing with even Stefano Bonomo, the former Republic striker. Spent 2018 with Orange County and now the second season with Real Monarchs of Salt Lake City. And he'll go into the left back position.
Ball whipped in. Here's a chance for Iwasa. Played behind him. He's going to have to come back to it. It's going to be a bit of a difficult task and unable to. But now Sacramento able to win the ball again. And this might just be the MO of this team. If they make a mistake, if they concede a ball in the attack, they're going to fight it all that they have to get it right back. And I think if that's going to be the identity this year, Kevin, I think we have a lot of good things ahead of us. That's fun to watch, too. I, I mean, it's watching teams and, and supporting teams that have that bite. Whenever they lose the ball, the first thing they think is, ah, how am I going to get it back and how quick can I get it back? And I tell you, the amount of good things, if you look at, I mean, do some do some research statistically, like how many goals are scored, um, you know, off turnover in the final third within one or two passes. It's a it's a big big number, and and I think that's you know you know Briggs is is, is bringing that mentality into this team where it's now a, a discussion point uh, in training sessions. You know what I mean? Where in the past, at least during my day, that really wasn't talked about too much as maybe that that stat wasn't um, tracked as well as it is now. But if you well, if you watch this math, right? Yeah. I mean, it, from distance, and when you have fewer people in front of you and less distance to go, the probability of you scoring is, has to be a lot higher. Well, you think, too, <laughs> like when, when uh, you know, Salt Lake has the ball. Look at their shape right now. Look how wide and spread out they are with the ball. If there's a turnover, two passes, you can break that line it's so much easier. It's just, you know, these guys are set up for an offensive sort of, um, you know, they have possession of the ball. But when they lose it, they can't get back and get their shape in, uh, uh, quick enough. So, I mean, that's where the, the dangerous side of that that um, that turnover comes from. Well, we saw the Real Monarchs do it. I mean, that's kind of been the way that they have operated the last couple of seasons. And you saw that fight in the attack, and it was relentless. And now Sacramento has maybe that identity coming. We'll see how it develops. And that's the thing. We have yet to play a real match here. This ball is going to be lofted over the top and just a little bit too heavy from Warner. And he probably want that one back, but a good Second run. FC, and here's the substitution, the another minute. Academy Lash, player who signed a professional contract Academy in the offseason. Mario Panagos, a 17-year-old from Elk Grove. Quite a dynamic player. He will replace Cameron Iwasa. And here's a guy who made the 18 nine times last year, Kevin, but never started. Excited to see Panagos, man. He's been with the Academy since 2015. Yeah, that was great. I think, exactly. I mean, this is it's such a good, um, good feeder for talent. Well, watching training with him, he's electric. I mean, he he gets it. The amount of times that Mark, look at that, said, nice ball, Mario. I lost count after 10. Billy and Bijev just outside the 18. We'll play it back for Bob Rona. He has space, gonna get it in quickly. Tried to play it for Belmar in the back post. Cleaning it up is Skundrich. Belmar right back in there. Belmar just gonna give it a ride as he ran out of options. Really nowhere else to go. Thought he might be able to squeak one through. Don't mind that effort from your striker. Either way, they've got the ball right back here in this deep third. And another concession to a throw. It'll be Jordan McCrary on this right side. He's got Wheeler, Warner. He'll find Scundridge. Scundridge finding a little bit of a seam. I mean, look at this. We talked about the compact shape. Kevin, this is it right here with him, 35 yards. McCrary, he's got room. He's trying to find a runner near post, sending it clear as Holt. Panagos, he's got space. All and done. Billy and BJ, what a strike! An absolutely sensational goal from Villian B. Jeb, and we are tied at two in Sacramento. That's absolute textbook right there. Wonderful strike by Villian B. Jeb. You see exactly what he's setting himself up for. Goalkeeper David Ochoa knows exactly what he's going to do as well. Just going to try to dip it far post under that crossbar. Beautifully executed by B. Jeb. A nice little curler. And that be a little assist uh, from Manny Panagos as well. A great effort there, wonderful by, by Bijev, equalizing things to peace. In the 72nd, 73rd minute, good ball by Panagos. That's tough, actually a tough ball for him to hit. And you see Bijev knows exactly what he's gonna do, dips his shoulder to the left, pushes out to the right, and a bit of a curler in that the top corner. Is the Villian Bijev we've been wanting to see for a couple of seasons now. 
I mean, you look at this game, what we saw from San Jose, he just has a different confidence about him this season. And you hope that translates here into the regular I completely agree. I mentioned earlier, I want, I want to see the bite. I want to see him fight. That killer instinct. Well, just look at this team being down 2-0 to essentially almost an MLS team. I mean, maybe not quite all first-teamers, but you're talking about guys who are on MLS contracts. You go down 2 nothing, and you come out of the break, Oh, and you tied it yeah, up. Yeah, immediately. Did a great job. Good character. You never were down. Dangerous ball from Wheeler as he plays it back to Skunder. Skunder's in All trouble, done. able to escape somehow. barroto has got a little bit of room. Just outside the edge, he's got Belmar on the end of it. It'll be headed away and out of play. It'll be a throw for the Real Monarchs. It's a little heavy right there from Barrona. But Belmar, again, finding himself in good spaces, good places. It is two to two as Bjeb scores in the 74th minute. Tower Bridge Battalion showing up as well tonight. Put a good crowd here for a preseason match. These Republic fans love to see their boys in Old Glory Red and they're Hoping to get one more and potentially a victory here before the USL Championship regular season begins next week right here against FC Tulsa. Warner. Quickly in. And McCrary, a good idea. And that'll be good a foul. small, yeah, smart foul coming from Drew Gundry. Nah. Picks up a caution for it. Still not the worst thing. I mean, who cares? It's preseason. Okay, Kev, so we talked about the 2019 USL Cup the champions, Real Salt Lake, or excuse me, Real Monarchs Bruce of Salt Lake City. Republic Obviously, Republic won in 2014. Can you name the other five since 2011 that have won USL Championship? Why are you put me on a spot like this I'm guy? Putting you, this is tough. No? Think about it. You can't? No. Okay, one, one was going for a three-peat from the East. Stefano Bonomo play for one of them. Orlando. Orlando's one. Louisville? That's two. Yeah. Stefano Bonomo played for the, one of the others. New York? Yes, that's three. Um, one of them's going to be tough to get because I didn't remember this. Sacramento. You got Sacramento. You got two more. Real. Uh, yeah, we got that. Yeah. Uh, I'm blanking. Rochester Rhinos. Rochester, yeah. That was a year after. That was 2015. That was, that was third, yeah. And then we weren't in the league yet, so I'll give you a free pass. Charleston Battery. There you go. There it is. The Louisville. Almost with a three-peat. And Real Monarch said no. McCrary, one quick touch on the ground. Just behind. Oh. Panagos <laughs> just sent it wide. <laughs> Eyes too big. And he just could not find target. Yeah, and it, a tight little window for him. To, tight little window for him to find, but still love the effort. <laughs> And I mean, you've got it, you're home, you're yeah. feeling, you're yeah. too amped yeah. up. I don't even know if I would have, I'd probably whip the ball all together. Look at that. And you're not expecting it. Eric Holt breaks it up. Yeah, so he's got that tight window to find, but still like to see if he can. And you can see Belmar too. Belmar's reaction is yeah. like, oh, he's probably seen Mario make that 25 out of 26 times in training. It'll stay two to two. Wheeler, look at this ball. Moving it, playing it forward for McCrary. McCrary battling. McCrary taken down. And the flag will go up and a foul. And likely, what? what? what in the world? Out of bounds. And Warner and the rest of this crowd can't believe it as everyone assumed Vasquez would have been tagged with a foul at the least. Maybe yellow. I don't, don't think it was malicious, so a foul at the this very least. Like, how, how can you be a referee, and how, how do you miss that? I, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing, like, clueless. There's a little bit of a shove, and then there it is. Like, what, who? <laughs> Unreal. A little Unreal flick round. on from Billion Bjab, who scored the game-tying goal in the 74th minute. He had just one goal all of 2019 after having six in 2018. Here's a guy, Adam Grinwitz. I don't think we've talked about Adam other than when I forced you to talk about him. 
We've, you've probably seen the ball three times tonight, other than been a quiet the goals, night, man. which has been good. Which is the hard part about this 2-2 match. Yes, it's a preseason. The Republic have dominated tonight, Kevin. That, that pressure has been something I don't think we've seen, really even in Precky's time when he liked to pressure at times. We have not seen this in seven years. You know, I'm excited for this team to start to gel and develop even more. Warner staying on his feet. He's got to get rid of it. B. Jeff. Penagos, what a touch. So you heard uh, Ben Gumper, the COO and president, talk a little bit about, we asked him some of the young guys, like, you know, are you just looking for the future? He said, no, this is now. These guys are that good. How do you assess where they are? I mean, obviously, we haven't seen them in a full season yet, but from what you've seen this preseason, what do you think about these youngsters? Specifically, Sargis and, and uh, Panagos. I mean, it's great quality, right? I mean, and Sargis, for me, uh, I mean, play, I played a similar situation or position as as, Sar as as Hayden does, so I kind of like look at that with a little bit of a different line. Here's Manny picking the ball up in a really nice spot. So you caught between two minds. But Sargis has all the physical tools and, and the, the, the left-footed style of play, strong, fearless, 17 years old. I mean, the sky's the limit for a guy like that. And Panagos is a guy in a, in a position where you've got to be clever, you've got to be creative, and you've got to go out there and get results. So it would be interesting to see how, how both of them kind of settle in. Uh, I think Pana uh, Panagos specifically, um, it would be interesting to see how he can combine and what kind of minutes he's going to get this year. Well, and you know, part of this, you have to think about, Kevin, this is a play also to get some guys from the academy ready for MLS play in 2022. For sure. But at the same time, you also don't want to just put guys in who maybe aren't ready. I think what we're seeing are in his preseason. These guys are ready to play. Absolutely ready to play. Vijay trying to find a seam. Not much there as Carlton Belmar, the only one in the box. As we were talking there, Kyle Coffey came into the match for Real Monarch, Salt Lake City. Coffey out of Syracuse, Utah. Crowd not agreeing with that, but Coffey drafted in the 2019 draft by RSL. Kyle Coffey, well, he comes, by the way, of University of Washington, one of the other Husky greats. Crowd liking that. As the other Huskies come out, Ian Russell, of course, of Reno, and Christian will down. And there's some uh, shoving going on. The guy's off the ball. Uh, and Vijav. And some chatting happening between Noah Powder and BJ. And the two will be separated. I saw the crowd. It was a big reaction with the crowd. Yeah, I think they we were watching the ball here closer to us. For a preseason match, Kevin, you would think this is a playoff. <laughs> I mean, the chippiness and the intensity between these two sides. You know what we saw? This You're reminds me of... Who's he telling to go? It's Everton. So Everton's being shown. And BJ and Everton continue to have conversations even though Everton is off. And so here comes Pena instead. Well, all right, well, so Pena is in. And Everton's out. I don't know if that substitution was happening already or if that substitution or just became necessary. <laughs> There's still 10 men out there. But you know what this, I mean, maybe it's a little different just because of geographics, but when San Jose used to come here during the preseason, it, it was like a match among the biggest rivals. I mean, it was so heated. And these guys wanted to win, and you could tell that it meant a lot more than just getting ready for the year. Yeah, I think a lot of times, too, if you have, you're playing in a situation where you're playing against, you know, first teamers or MLS players, MLS contracts, there's always a little bit of a chip on your shoulder. 
as a as a uh, you know the republic right now, right? You want to go out there and prove to whomever and everybody that hey, you guys aren't better than we are. Belmar, and he just ran into the wall. Bob wrote it smartly held back, but there's another opportunity where you're seeing McCrary and Barona with the play of Scunders and Wheeler, giving them opportunities to cut off square balls, to make diagonal runs, and potentially taking one away. I, I mean, here, this is a quality side in Real Monarchs. I mean, you talk about some of these other teams that don't have the quality of players. I think some of these little small short passes, they turn into long passes sometimes from the opponent. I think they're going to turn into turnovers really quick for this Republic side if they can keep this up. McCrary to throw it into Scundrich. Scundrich is also the captain of that Stanford team that won back to back to back championships at the College Cup. Matt Mahoney, been quiet for him as well tonight. It's a good thing. And a handball, and the flag goes up late, but they'll earn it anyway. It's interesting to see what Real Salt Lake does too this season, Kevin. And you talk about you know, Nick Ramondo, one of the all-time greats, maybe the greatest goalkeeper of all time in MLS, retires. Kyle Beckerman, however, still there. Uh, very good defensive solid team. They lost Luis Severino, there's some Jefferson Severino, uh, but they're gonna fill in some younger guys with scoring. You may see some of these guys getting some opportunities. Well, you got a lot, a lot going on, Rob. Right, you got a new coach, new GM. Uh, Freddie Wars came in. Ball driven well, here's oh, yeah. a chance, back post, what a save and a follow up. BJ. And it's number two in a brace for Billy and BJ. Right place, right time, everybody crashing. And it's having a good old time here in Sacramento with the Republic going three to two. There you go, BJ, talk about killer instinct. That's what we want to see. Wonderful ball in the box, by the way, from Barahona. There's some great balls in the box to off set pieces. Seen a lot of those tonight from Juan Barona. There's a really good effort by a goalkeeper, David Ochoa, to keep that initial header out, and it goes off the post, and then take a look here. Wonderful ball driven in the box. Looks like it came off of Mahoney, and then it's right, right place, right time. Oh, might have oh. come off of, off of Real, off Salt Lake, That's 62. But still, good effort by the goalkeeper. Gets his hand on it, but <laughs> Bichev. Right place, right time. So Bjev with a brace. We said we wanted more goals from him. There you go. Oh, you got it. Ask and you shall receive. And I'll tell you what, Kev. Yeah, you know, we had Ben Guppert up here in that first half. 0-2, we get rid of him for the second he's half. He's not here. allowed in the booth anymore. He's out. He's so out. he's out. We're now at 3-2. to two. Sorry, Ben. It was fun while it lasted. Sacramento with 3-2 advantage. All three goals coming in the second half of action. And if you're Mark Briggs, you got to feel pretty good. Just the fight from this team to go down two goals to nothing. Well, come and, and come out the way they did, you know, you get Carlton it, it, Belmark. It was scored. like nothing had changed. Exactly. It was like you yeah. didn't even think about those two goals. And that, and as a coach, I think it's easy to say that. Every, every coach says that. Yeah. Stay with it. But for your players to actually do it, it's a completely different thing. And a foul out in the open field. So BJ Evan, the 74th and 86th Carlton Belmar, which came off of a strike from Villian BJ, or at least a ball played into the box from BJ. And that is where we are. Alvin Jones with one of the best set pieces we probably have ever seen. Scored the first in the 27th minute. Yeah, he and then Garcia in a one on one. And you talk about, I mean, BJ has been involved in all three of the goals, right? And, you know, he's a guy, he really was a player that was a number 10 in the middle, sort of a maestro, as you'd like to maybe use that term in Portland. And then he was asked to move out wide once he came to Sacramento. He had the ball at his feet a lot more, and now he has not had that the last two years. 
Bonago is just going to put it out into space, push from behind. It's a really good first and touch. And we by may the way. see a yellow coming, and it's going to go against Alvin Jones, and that may just be the fifth yeah, yellow card now for Real Salt Lake. Real Monarchs two. of Salt Lake City, excuse me. It's a really good first touch by uh, Mario. That first touch puts him in a position to get his head up. So we're about the 90th minute mark here, Kevin. Obviously, the goals have been fantastic. The fight's been incredible. Uh, maybe something that has not been so obvious that you really like from maybe it's a certain player, maybe it's overall. What, did, what is something that stood out to you here this evening? Something that stood out this evening, uh, honestly, uh, Bijev. I mean, we talked, uh, uh, honestly, last year just felt like he didn't have that bite, that, that killer instinct. And, and I don't know if he was bored with the game, and bored, bored with the game might be too too strong of a description, but, but it's just, maybe just not, he, maybe he didn't not, have it, right? Maybe not engaged with the system with he was in. Right, and, and now um, I think he's such a quality player that was so it's so important for Sacramento to have him at his best if we want to get results and make a run in the in the postseason. Look at this um, effort here continuing on, and McCrary goes and earns the ball as Real Monarchs just let it sit away, and it will be uh, right back for Sacramento as McCrary's effort here in the 90th minute, 91st in a preseason game. Yeah, then, but you're right. I mean, Villian, all three all in the mix for all three, all three All three of them. And, and, you know, I think really, like, for, for that attack to work, you need you need a, a guy like Bijev to be firing on all cylinders. And so far, so good tonight. So that's that's what I'm taking away from this is you see hopefully a, a refreshed, a strong Belmore is. Wow. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I want to see him. I want, I want the killer instinct. I want that bite back. And I think we're, we're, we got a glimpse of it. And so far, um, Let's keep it going. Confidence seems high. Well, these extra minutes of stop time brought to you by Rayleigh Something Extra Rewards Program. Earn points every time you shop. Sign up today at Rayleigh's.com. Public trying to play this one out here in the final <laughs> moments against the Real Monarch Salt Lake City McCrary. If you just tuned in, didn't look at the score or the clock, you think it's in the first five, ten minutes of this match. These guys going at it. And I, you know, I. You never quite know in a preseason game what you're going to get. I think what's been impressive is that this team has treated preseason like these matter, not just to get into shape. I think you see that a lot where guys are just trying to work them into shape. If you're Leo Messi, you probably don't need to do a lot of the things in preseason. But when you have opportunities like this to get on the field and show what you can do. I mean, a credit to Mark Briggs for putting two teenagers into the lineup to entrusting that here early on. So we'll see whether or not that will happen a week from today. But we'll celebrate tonight in Sacramento this preseason victory. Three to two. And it's less about the win, but in the way that they did it, the effort was fantastic. From the first whistle to the last, the Republic go down two goals. And Mark Briggs and his staff able to fire this team up and score three in the second half of action and Sacramento winning this final preseason matchup. Kevin, what a game. Great game. Great to see Briggs get out, come out here with Bonnie. First uh, real test here, and gets the W against an old club and, a, and a, a, a great comeback, gritty game by Sacramento. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with your final highlights, final thoughts before this club gets ready for FC Tulsa a week from today. This is the look of a 12-year-old cancer survivor. A boy who spent a quarter of his life fighting to get a chance at the rest. A boy whose cancer took his knee, but we gave him back the use of his leg. For extraordinary breakthroughs and everyday childhoods, UC Davis Health offers primary care and specialty care across 17 convenient locations. UC Davis Health, discovering healthy.
train with us and now play with us and even make an impact. I told Mario uh, immediate impact when he subbed in. So to have them here with us is an absolute pleasure. Pleasure, sorry, and uh, so they can learn from us and grow and help us. That's awesome. And talk a little bit about what it's been like now. You're back here at Palm Purpose Park, playing in front of the home crowd. How excited are you for opening night next weekend? I missed it so much. I wish this was opening night, man. But uh, we'll bring even more fire, even more excitement next week. And I know all the guys are looking forward to it. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, give up your man of the match, Philly and Beaches. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and to celebrate the win, let's run a little tune to celebrate. Let's do it. Welcome back to Sacramento. Kevin Goldthwait, Rob McAllister with you. Here's our full-time highlights brought to you by NorCal Honda dealers and a thunderous strike coming from Alvin Jones in the 27th minute. What a what beauty. <laughs> that ball's filled with helium or something, man. A you know, knuckler and an absolute dandy of a ball. And then a turnover by Sacramento, a rare turnover on the evening. And Olaski plays it forward for Garcia, 1v1, just able to sneak it past Grinwist, the second of the night. The Republic would go into the half down two goals to none, even though they probably felt that they were the better team in that first 45. Sacramento would come back, first minute of action. Ball played in by Bijev, and it's Carlton Belmer at the doorstep. Yeah, exactly. Good run by Bijev, get in the box, and then obviously the bodies in the box we talked about all match. There's just been plenty of them. And love to see back post. Johnny on the spot goal from Belmar. 74th minute, Mario Panagos finding Bijev, takes two steps, one shot into the net. Yeah, great, great job by just tees himself up. Great first touch, gets his... Picks his, picks his spot, makes his decision, and executes. Wonderful finish. Wasn't done yet. Ball served in nicely. Beautiful save from David Ochoa, but right place, right time. And look and at him. Look at him just creeping, just creeping, and finding himself in a good spot. It's well done. Third goal of the night. It would be 3-2 to two Sacramento, and that would be the final here in this preseason. Final tune-up for the Republic, and pretty good look here. Ochoa is a big-time player tonight, number one. And Sargis and Mahoney playing a set piece as Republic go on to take this one. Well, Kevin, a week from today is when it all matters. It's the home opener, FC Tulsa coming to Sacramento. 7.30 kick. Get your tickets if you don't have them already. And, of course, Goldie and I will be on the air with you if you're not able to make it out to the match. So whether you're online or whether you are watching on KQCA, We'll be here with you. Thanks for tuning in for this win. Three to two, Sacramento, great tune-up. First look at your Republic on the year. Should be good things ahead. Good night, everybody. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.